it didn't take Toyota long to start relying on AI to help build better cars. If you are excited for an AI generated future, smash the like button and let's get into it. <laughs> So I'm going to get into the finished product before we get into how they're doing this. But check this out. Look, this is the hammerhead design that we currently see on the Prius, right? But look at what they're doing for battery electric vehicles. They're using AI to help make more efficient battery electric vehicles by making them as slippery as possible. We know Toyota teased last week them using hypersonic missile technology from Mitsubishi to create a bubble around the car to reduce drag. Well, they're also using AI to reduce drag as well. So out of Los Altos, California, Toyota Research Institute, TRI, today unveiled a generative artificial intelligence AI technique to amplify vehicle designers. Currently, designers can leverage publicly available text-to-image generative AI tools as an early step in their creative process. With TRI's new technique, designers can add initial design sketches and engineering constraints into this process cutting down the iterations needed to reconcile design and engineering considerations. Generative AI tools are often used as inspiration for designers, but cannot handle the complex engineering and safety considerations that go into actual car design, said Avinash Balachandran, director of TRI's Human Interactive Driving Division, or HID, whose team worked on this technology. And this technique combines Toyota's traditional engineering strengths with the state-of-the-art capabilities of modern generative AI. TRI researchers released two papers describing how the technique incorporates incorporates precise engineering constraints into the design process. Constraints like drag, which of course affects fuel efficiency, and in this case, energy efficiency on battery electric vehicles, and chassis dimensions like ride height and cabin dimensions, which affect handling, ergonomics, safety, and more, can now be implicitly incorporated into the generative AI process. The team tied principles from optimization theory used extensively for computer-aided engineering to text-to-image-based generative AI. The resulting algorithm allows a designer to optimize engineering constraints while maintaining their text-based stylistic prompts to the generative AI process. As an example, a designer can request via text prompt a suite of designs based on an initial prototype sketch with specific stylistic properties like sleek, SUV-like, modern, while also optimizing a quantitative performance metric. In the research paper, the team focused specifically on aerodynamic drag. The approach can also optimize any other performance metrics or constraints inferred from a design image. TRI is harnessing the creative power of AI to amplify automobile designers and engineers, said Charlene Wu, senior director at TRI's Human-Centered AI division, whose team collaborated with the Human Interactive Driving Team on this project. By incorporating engineering constraints directly into the design process, this tool could also help Toyota design electrified vehicles more quickly, more efficiently. And for the consumer, that's huge, especially in this era as electrification keeps changing very rapidly as we make advances on, on efficiency and batteries, et cetera. This helps ramp up, get products out faster, more efficiently and cheaper, which will help the end consumer as well. Takeru Kato, the BEV factory president of Toyota, mentions that reducing drag is critical for improving the aerodynamics of BEVs to maximize their range. Now, last week, Toyota mentioned tons of new battery technology that they're working on mixed with things like this, the AI that is shaping cars to be more efficient. We'll be getting vehicles in 2026, starting with the Lexus lineup with over 500 miles of EPA range. But in the future with solid state batteries, you'll be able to get over 700 miles of EV range with no drawbacks in cold weather. And you'll also have super fast charging. So hopefully that solid state battery comes out in my lifetime, it would be great to see. But even if these don't ever come out, look at what they're working on. We'll have 500 plus miles, maybe 550 miles by the end of this decade on bipolar lithium ion technologies, which is gonna slingshot Toyota from being one of the, well, not the greatest EV automakers right now to arguably right there at the top. But since we're on the topic of EVs, Hyundai just had an investor day. 
So they talked about a lot of exciting stuff here that I wanted to break down with you guys as well. At least gloss over it. Hyundai is going to boost their annual EV sales goal to 2 million units by 2030. Toyota, a bigger company, wants to be at least 3.5 million vehicles or battery electric vehicles by 2030. They're investing over 109 trillion won over the next 10 years. And a third of that investment is going straight towards electrification, including nine and a half trillion for battery development and the remaining funding development of a next generation modular architecture for EVs and increased EV production capacity. So that means completely revamping their production system, completely revamping their factories, and it means a new EV architecture that is far superior to the eGMP architecture, which isn't actually, it's actually one of the best out there on the market. But I'm going to take a quick time out there because Hyundai is uh, getting investigated by the NHTSA for a few Ionic 5s that are losing power. The integrated control charging unit that powers vehicle batteries seem to be getting fried, which obviously makes it a brick. Also, Hyundai's considering joining Tesla's North American Charging Alliance with Ford and General Motors. Toyota wants, well, Toyota hasn't said anything, but Elon Musk wants Toyota to get on board. And Hyundai is not that excited about it because Hyundai's 800 volt architecture is in theory superior to what we see in Tesla's. Tesla's max out around 250 kilowatts of charging. And in a perfect world, I think Hyundai's can go past that, maybe 350 kilowatts of charging with their, their 800 volt system. So Hyundai, I think it would be smart for them to include it as well as the traditional CCS charging, if that is cost effective on their vehicles. So back to investor day for Hyundai. This new platform is called IMA or Integrated Modular Architecture, and it is 100% replacing the eGMP. So eGMP did not is not going to have a very long lifespan. And you might be saying the same for Toyota's first electric architecture, the ETNGA, but eGMP is not shared with really any other Hyundai architecture where ETNGA is shared with the K platform for Toyota. So we mentioned optimizing existing ICE plants to build electric vehicles, but it looks like they're also building new EV factories as well. Well, we know that they are in the United States in Georgia. So I wouldn't be surprised if they're doing the same over in Korea as well. On the battery end, they're strengthening their overall value chain for the battery, including stable procurement of battery materials, design capability, and next generation batteries. So this next generation platform will be used on 13 new dedicated EV models, which include the Kia and Genesis lineup as well through 2030. And because they're standardizing modules and parts between the models, you get a better economies of scales here, which significantly reduces EV development complexity and costs. In the existing system, meaning eGMP, auto parts can only be shared among vehicles that share the same platform. However, with the IMA development system, over 80 common modules can be utilized across different segments, irrespective of vehicle type, allowing for versatile combinations. And I think it would be amazing to have something like a Hyundai Venue with 200 miles of range that costs like what an internal combustion Hyundai Venue does, which is about $20,000. So this new IMA platform includes nearly all vehicle classes. So I wonder what vehicle classes are not included here. But anyways, they're saying it ranges from small and large SUVs to pickup trucks. Could we have battery electric pickup trucks from Hyundai and Kia finally here in the United States? We know Kia is working on one, but it won't come to the United States as a, it's a, like a hybrid or a gas model because of the chicken tax. So it's pretty much for Southeast Asia, Oceania, Oceania Australia, etc. But besides pickup trucks, you'll also have all the flagship models from the Genesis brand on this new platform as well. Like Toyota, they'll have next generation NCM batteries and and LFP batteries. In addition, like Toyota, they're using AI here, but they're using AI for battery management system and will ensure real-time monitoring and diagnosis of battery conditions, ensuring enhanced safety by preventing thermal runaway. Well, if we have solid state batteries, we won't have to worry about that. Or if you're using LFP batteries, you don't have to really worry about thermal runaway either. The proportion of global EV production is set to increase from 8% this year to 34% in 2030, which is easily doable for Hyundai, in my opinion. Toyota, on the other hand, it's like 
0.002% of their total volume is battery electric vehicles, and they're hoping to be around 35% battery electric vehicles by 2030 as well. Let's say Hyundai, let's say they're making seven and a half million vehicles a year. 8% of that is 600,000. Based off of last year's numbers, Hyundai and Kia are producing 30 times more battery electric vehicles, well, including Genesis, than Toyota. And then by 2030, Toyota is supposed to be making a million and a half more battery electric vehicles than them. It's hard to imagine. The EV plant in Georgia called Meta Plant America will begin production in the second half of 2024. So we're just about a year away already from production. And 300,000 vehicles, or more specifically, battery electric vehicles can be pumped out of that factory. Now, it won't happen that fast in 2024. It'll be a probably a three-year ramp up before they can start producing this many PEVs there. And then in Korea, their EV dedicated factory aims to start mass production in 2025. Interesting that America is actually getting uh, like the nod there. But you know, with the EV tax credit situation, it makes sense that they're going full speed ahead on producing battery electric vehicles in North America first. A lot of their technology is actually being developed at the Hyundai Motor Group Innovation Center in Singapore of all places which is scheduled to be operational this year. There, they will demonstrate various new manufacturing technologies for enhancement of quality logistics and management, automation, and much more. So 75% of the technology they're developing in Singapore will be brought into the Georgia plant. And Hyundai's planning to increase the localization rate by increasing the proportion to 75% from the current 0.7%. So they want to make 75% of the battery electric vehicles in the American market for America. So what are they currently making here right now? Well, I think it's just the GV70 electric vehicle, which watch my review on it. It's fantastic. But also they'll be producing the Kia EV9 three row crossover there pretty soon. I think early 2024, I think first, first batches are coming over from Korea of the EV9 by the end of this year in 2023. For Europe, 54% are going to be produced locally compared to the 7% that we see now. Hyundai's aiming for a 10% plus profitability for EVs in 2030. And man, is that going to be fun. We know Tesla has huge profit margins. They also don't have a dealer network that soaks into their profit margins. So if all things are equal in the manufacturing, procurement, and materials, Tesla will still be about... 6% more profitable than the legacy automakers, which is insane. But I'm going to end it there. What do you think about AI taking over the future of designing cars from a not only an artistic standpoint, but from a performance and efficiency standpoint and a safety standpoint? Like, bring it on. I'm all for it to enhance our simple human capabilities. So bring it on. I'm all for it. I'll see you guys down below. Are you scared of AI? You got to embrace it at some time. You can't beat them. You got to join them. I'll catch you guys down below. Have a great day, Una. Peace out.